Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> Begin reading with verse 10 where Paul says, Finally, my brother. In other words, he, he is uh, closing out this chapter and he says, finally, this, he's dealing with some other things in this chapter. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Not strong in ourselves, not strong in our ability, but in the Lord. And, in the, and if you're strong in the Lord, how many of you know you're strong in his word? Because the, the Lord and his word are one. And he says, to put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, you know, I, I've heard people teach along this line and read some books along this line, and they talk about how to put your armor on, and I guess they're looking at it from one angle, and, and I'm looking at it from another angle. But my question always was, why did you ever take it off? I mean, they talk about to get up and put it on every morning. Hey, don't take it off. Sleep in this stuff, you know. <laughs> you get your armor off, and you're, you're vulnerable to the enemy. So my question was, why, why take it off? Now, you know, a, a born-again child of God, when they just get born again, why, then they need to understand uh, uh, these things. But now notice, he says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. Now he's talking about the fact that you've got to deal with principalities and powers trying to get at you through your flesh and through things that come by natural desire. Uh, when, when you look in the Bible, start looking into what they call spiritual warfare, and Paul in another place says, for our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imagination, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Uh, every place that talks about spiritual warfare is talking about in the context dealing with the flesh. Because you see, there are spiritual forces that try to get involved with your carnal mind and your carnal thinking and to get you over in the flesh side. Now one of the things is, if we're going to try to fight the devil, then you're going to lose when you start. Because the battle's already been won, Jesus already defeated him, and you can't fight him in your own ability. You need to trust in what he's already done with the devil. He spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly. Now, now the word spoiled, uh, the apostle Paul uses, is, uh, I think it's in Colossians where he says that, uh, it means to strip off or unclothe. He unclothed the principalities and powers and made a show of them openly. In other words, he stripped them of their authority. He stripped them of their, their ability and uh, then Jesus talked about in, uh, I think it was Luke the 10th chapter, he says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Now, when you look at those Greek words used there, when he said, I give you power, that word power is, is the word that should be translated authority. I give you authority over all the power of the enemy or the power of the devil. Now, the word power associated with the devil does not mean authority because he doesn't have any. You have to have a physical flesh, blood, and bone body to have authority on this planet. He doesn't have one. He has a spiritual body but doesn't have a physical body. He's here uh, illegally as far as that's concerned because uh, to, to be legal on this planet, you have to be born here. Now, I'm, I'm not going to take time to go into all that, but John 10 tells us that. He said, but... Uh, that if you enter in any other way except through the, she, uh, the door into the sheepfold, the same as a thief and a robber. That's how Satan got in this planet. He was not born here. He was a created being, but uh, he fell and uh, he, he wasn't born. When he showed up in the Garden of Eden, he'd already been cast out of heaven. And so he doesn't have a physical flesh, blood, and bone body. Did you notice that he had to borrow the body of a serpent to manifest himself? See, any spirit being in this planet doesn't have a physical body, does not have authority here. The only authority they, they have is what they can usurp from some body. They have to have a body to get authority from. 
That's why you can't send even the Holy Spirit. You can't send the Holy Spirit to preach uh, the gospel overseas or, uh, you know, anywhere. He doesn't have a body. But if you'll go, he'll go. See, your body gives you authority here. So we need to understand that uh, the principalities and powers, it, we are not fighting them. He's talking about we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In other words, what Paul is saying, if you're going to get in strife with somebody that's causing you problems, you're dealing with the wrong end of the deal because the principalities and powers are influencing that individual to harass you or to get you all upset. And if you get mad at them and start dealing with them, get in strife with them, that's not the real problem. The real problem is the spiritual forces that are driving that person to do that. So what he's saying, you don't wrestle, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness. In other words, you come against them and enforce their defeat. Jesus defeated the devil. And uh, the Bible says that he paralyzed him or destroyed him that had the power of devil and uh, the power of death in Hebrews chapter 2. Now the word destroyed there is a little blind to us because it literally means he paralyzed him. He paralyzed him. In other words, do you remember when uh, uh, Moses was leading the children of Israel and they began to murmur and complain? The Bible says that God sent fiery serpents among them, bit them, and they died. Now, what you have to understand about that statement that God sent them, that uh, the Hebrew mind and the scribes and the way they considered it was if God permitted it, he committed it. Now, we know from the New Testament that's not true. God permits or allows a lot of things to happen today because people allow it. It's not his responsibility. His word tells you to submit yourself unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, if we don't do what he said to do, and the devil doesn't flee, and he causes us a lot of problems, whose fault is it? But somebody say, well, yeah, but God allowed it. Yeah, and he'll allow anything you will allow. He has to, because he gave mankind authority over this planet. And if you don't do what he said to do, you can't expect to have the victory he said you could have. So that's why we have to deal with these things. We, we have to enforce Satan's defeat. But you cannot fight the devil. There's no need to fight the devil. There's no need to get in an argument with the devil or even have a conversation with the devil, as far as that's concerned, because we are overcomers. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. The problem is that some folks don't have any word in their testimony. I've heard a lot of folks that had a lot of words about the devil in their testimony. They can always tell you what the devil's doing and what the devil does at every time. And every time we get things going good, the devil comes in and throws a monkey wrench in the deal. You know, that's a cliche that, that we use sometimes. And uh, they say he does it every time. And I said, is that right? And you can have what you say. And you're saying what you have. And you're giving him the authority to do that with your words. And, and sometimes you'll hear these people, oh, they get all riled up and they're going to fight the devil. They're going to lose because they're getting over in their own power. They're trying to fight a battle that's already been won. That proves they don't believe that Jesus won the battle and the Word of God doesn't mean anything to them. They say, well, yeah, I know that's in the Bible, but now here's what happened to me. Now, see what they did. They cast out the word in favor of what happened to them. And the problem was they didn't submit themselves unto God or either they didn't, uh, didn't resist the devil and he didn't flee from them. Therefore, they, uh, they cast out the word in favor of what happened. Now, folks, I'll tell you, the, the devil's power comes through deception. You study the, the New Testament and you'll find that he's a deceiver. And if he can deceive you into believing he's the great big devil and he can just do what he wants to do, and if he can get you to talk in his game, he'll whip you four ways from Sunday. I mean, every time you wake up in the morning, you're in trouble. But if you keep the word of God in your mouth, he is in trouble big time. Uh, let, let's read on down here. I, I, I get so excited about this. Uh, look, look, let's go a little further. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles, uh, uh, withstand in the evil day. How many w would admit we're in an evil day? I, I noticed in the newspaper the other, other day where, where an 80-year-old man shot a police officer, and he had said with his mouth, now he shot him because he was giving him a ticket for not having his seat belt fastened. The man had told all over town, if they ever try to give me a ticket for not wearing my seat belt, they'll be looking down the wrong end of my gun. He said it, he said it, he said it until it got at him, and when they stopped him and was writing him a ticket, he killed the man. See, he fell right into the hands of the devil. He started saying, what you say gets on the inside of you. Jesus said it this way, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth defileth the man. The words that we speak give power to the devil, or they give power of God in our lives, depending on whether you speak in the devil's words or God's words. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then he goes on to say, Through faith we understand the world, we're framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made by things which do appear. In other words, there's creative power in spoken words. And, uh, you know, you've all been there. You quote the multiplication tables till you knew them by heart in school. What you speak gets in your heart. When you see what he's talking about here, he said, having done all to stand, stand therefore. So we're talking about standing against the wiles of the devil. And we're here in uh, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, let's, we're at verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. Now, what is truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life life. The Word of God is truth. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Then verse 14 said, The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, revealing that Jesus was the Word personified. Now, I could go several different ways from there. I better stay with the subject. <laughs> I'm going to read that verse 13 again. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith. Now, that's what we're talking about, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, you know it had been great if he said you, you could quench 95% of them, but he didn't say that, did he? He said, wherewith you shall be able. Didn't say you would. He said you could. You shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. We'll read that again. Above all, above all else that he's talked about here, above all, taking the shield of faith. Now, what's he talking about, a shield of faith? Now, now our problem is that we get a vision of a, uh, of a Roman shield, you know, they kind of held it in their hand. But he says, above all, taking the shield of faith. Now, the way the Lord dealt with me about this, I was praying one day, praying in the Spirit, and the Lord said, now, now you've been thinking about this shield of faith as just being something you hold in your hand, you try to catch all the fire darts, you, you have to be quick to do that. Like the story I heard about Mr. Christian going through life, said he took the shield of faith, and, and the devil shot a fire dart, and he threw up his shield, and, and he blocked it, and, and, and he shot one this way, and he blocked it. And, and uh, 
he's going along pretty good, and then the devil slipped around behind him and shot him in the billfold and killed him dead. Well, it, th th there's a sermon there, but I'll not get into it. But, uh, and, and what the Lord said to me was, He said, now you've been thinking of a shield or something, you have to just, but He said the shield is the Word of God. Now, now think about it for a minute. The Word of God is filled with faith. Paul says, faith cometh by hearing the Word of God. Now, if God's Word is filled with faith, then it must be, because if it wasn't filled with faith, you couldn't get faith by hearing the Word of God, could you? I mean, if you had a glass, if it doesn't have any water in it, you can't pour water out of it. But if there's water in it, you can pour water out of it. So, what he said was, the Word of God is the shield. That's what the shield is made of, is the Word of God. Now, think for a minute what Jesus did. See, He's our example, isn't He? On what we call the Mount of Temptation, he fasted 40 days, and uh, the devil tempted him 40 days and 40 nights. And he came to him, and, and Jesus would all, always only speak what the Word said. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And that, that was working so effectively with the devil, he decided, if I'm going to get anywhere with this fellow, I'm going to have to talk about what was written in the Word. So he quoted a, a, a from Psalms 91 and, and tried to get him to go up on the temple and cast himself down and because he said, the Scripture says that he will give his angels charge over thee and they'll keep you lest you dash your foot against the stone. Now he's, he's twisting the Word of God, trying to get Jesus to do a foolish act because of pride and commit suicide. Now that's the ultimate deception of the devil when he twists the Word of God to try to get you off base. Always keep it in the context. But Jesus said it is written, it is written, three times he quoted what the Word said. You know when he tried to get him to turn the stones into bread? He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the Word of God. Now, there's life in the Word of God. Every Word of God is filled with life. Well, now, if that's true, then every word of the devil must be filled with death. So we don't want to be caught speaking what he said, do we? But you'd be surprised at the people that can tell you everything the devil said. But then they want to know if you have a word from the Lord for them. Yeah. I do. Quit listening to the devil. Concentrate on what God said. But after Jesus had quoted the Word of God three times, the devil leaveth him for a more opportune time, and you know he never did find it. That settled it forever. And I'm telling you, folks, when, you, when the devil comes around, the enemy comes around with temptation and tempting you, you need to know what the Word said about the situation he's trying to tempt you in. And just say what the Word said. Don't get involved in a fight with the devil, because when you start speaking the Word, he will flee from you. You are resisting him with the Word of God. Now, we're taking Jesus' example for it. That's what Jesus did. Now, if anyone knew, knew how to resist the devil, it was Jesus. And I want you to know, he was never tempted again in those areas. Never. It was over with. Zilch. It was done. Sent his saddle home, John. He might as well quit because you can't get this fellow off the Word of God. And I'm telling the truth, folks, if you'll do the same thing, if you get a hold of this Word, get this Word on the inside of you, know what it says. That's why we ought to read this book. We ought to stay with the book. It is, there's life in this Word. Once you come off of the Word, and start railing against the devil, like I've heard some people do. They're going to kick, kick his teeth in and going to stomp his head. Well, I see in the Word of God where, where God's already broke his teeth out. He said he broke the teeth of the ungodly. Wouldn't he qualify? So why are you want to do it? I mean, it's already done. He's a defeated foe. We just need to enforce his defeat. And the way you do that, go back to the Word of God and see what the Word says about it. Don't get involved in a shouting match with the devil. 
And if you, like I said, if you're going to fight the devil, you're going to win. I mean, he's going to win. You're going to lose because you're over in the carnal realm. This is a spiritual warfare uh, that, that we deal with, and that means dealing with the fleshly nature, wanting to do something yourself. You've got to stay with what Jesus has done. As long as you stay behind this word, he will back you 100%. Once you walk out and behind the word, and you're going to do this, and you're going to do that. And I've seen a lot of people do that. And they got out there, and they got clobbered by the enemy. And, and they wondered what happened. They didn't stay with the word of God. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now, here's what the Lord said to me. He said, you have thought, talking to me, he said, you have thought that this is just a shield, but he said, it's, this word above all has a, a connotation, and now whether it was intended in the Scripture or whether the Holy Spirit just had it done that way so he could reveal it, over above all. He said, the Word of God builds a shield. The Word that you speak builds, builds a shield, and it's like a plexiglass canopy, like this uh, podium here. And it goes all over you and around to the floor on every side and moves with you everywhere you go. It's almost like an aura that radiates from you and it's produced by the Word of God that abides within you. Now listen to the things that Jesus said. In John 15, verse 7, Jesus said, If ye abide in me, well, if we're born again, we're abiding in him, and my words abide in you. Ask what you will. Say what you will, declare what you will, pray what you will, and it shall be done. Now, I know some of you are going to try to find that in your Bible. It didn't say that in that verse, but I'm taking several verses to show you that it's all involved there. Matthew 21 22 said, All things, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. So we're only limited by what we can believe based on the authority of the Word of God. If you can believe it, and find it on the authority of the Word, you can have it. So we're only limited by what we can believe. Now, faith cometh by hearing. And if you, if you study the connotation of what Paul is saying there in uh, Romans chapter 10, he says, the Word is nigh you. In verse 8, he said, the Word is nigh you. It is even in your mouth and in your heart. In other words, first it's in your mouth, then you speak it into your heart. Then in verse 17, he said, so then faith cometh by hearing. Now, with that, what he said there, it's in your mouth, <coughs> and it's in your heart. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> then he's talking about the fact that you're speaking the word, and it's causing faith to come. It'll come more quickly. If you hear your voice speaking what God said, <coughs> than if you hear anyone else speak what God said. For this reason... You believe more in what you say than what anybody else says, don't you? If you don't, something wrong with you. Once you speak something, if you, if you begin to speak it, if you speak it long enough, it becomes true to you. What you believe becomes true to you. Now, it might not be true. Uh, you know, some things that people start speaking. But it will become true to you if you speak it long enough. For instance, some, someone said, well, you know, healing went out with the apostles. Well, now, they've heard that taught all their life. Then to them, it did. Healing went out with the apostles. They don't believe God heals anymore. And as long as you don't believe it, you're not going to receive it. In other words, God's not going to embarrass you with a miracle. <laughs> so so what, what you didn't realize is that <laughs> what you believe limits God, or what you don't believe limits God. So we're only limited by what we believe based on the authority of the Word of God. You can take the shield of faith, and, the, and that shield of faith is built by the Word of God. You can build it as strong as you want. Well, I hope you've been blessed by the teaching on taking the shield of faith. You know, it's something we have to do. Your shield of faith doesn't just come running after you. You have to take it, and the shield of faith is made out of the Word of God. God's Word is the finest shield. It shields you from the powers of the enemy. And uh, James says, submit yourself unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 
I want to offer this tape. It's a two-tape series, actually. It's two audio cassettes. It's called Cure for Doubt and Unbelief. Now, you know, uh, there's legal doubt. Sometimes you just have a legal doubt. Uh, now, what I mean by legal doubt, you just don't know. You know, there's certain things that we just don't know. So therefore, if somebody said something very emphatic, we say, well, you know, I just don't know about the subject. Uh, I think it was uh, the man from uh, Oklahoma, Will Rogers, one time said, everybody is ignorant just about different things. <laughs> and you know, that is true. Uh, so if you didn't know, didn't have the knowledge of something, you just, you'd have legal doubt about it. But now, when we talk about unbelief, you're talking about something else altogether different. When you know what God's Word says, then you won't believe it. You're not in doubt. You're in stark unbelief. And this is what happened, and the story of it is in Hebrews, the third and fourth chapter, where God had told Israel, go in and possess the land, you know, uh, with Joshua was leading them. And they sent the 12 spies out. And they came back and said, uh, Ten of them brought an evil report. Now, what is an evil report? An evil report is a report that is contrary to what the Word of God says. God said, I've given you the land, go in and possess it. But Joshua and Caleb, they came back and said, we're well able to take the land. Let us go in at once and take the land. Now, they judged the situation in the light of what God had said, not in the light of what they saw over in the land. Now, there were giants in that land. So uh, they, they would not enter in. You see, the ten spies said, we can't do it. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. They were in unbelief, not just doubt. They were in unbelief because they knew what God had said, and they, they absolutely would not act upon it. And, of course, the time passed, which uh, they finally decided, well, we're going to go do it. And God said, don't do it. And all the times passed, and they decided to go anyway, and they got in a heap of trouble. <laughs> I'd like to preach that, but I better not. That's offer number 2233, two audio cassettes, called Cure for Doubt and Unbelief. The Word of God is the cure for doubt and unbelief. Uh, we have a toll-free order line, 1-877-396-9400. Two audio cassettes called uh, Cure for Doubt and Unbelief, $10. And until next time, this is Charles Caps reminding you that the devil is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.